Hey everybody, Geology 351 from the field, heading to Liberty, Washington today in Rob Reppin's gold mine, very special opportunity for us. But I'm meeting my friends here at Swalk Prairie. I wanted to meet here and lay out some landmarks uh, for the students and also make sure that we can get to Rob's place safely. Hope you enjoy this visit, very special treat. Liberty Gold, Rob Reppin, let's begin. Thanks for joining us. The bedrock has been vacuumed. Um, there are some fractures in there that we're, we have yet to go break those cracks open and see if there's it. We know, we know there's some pieces with the metal detector. There's a few hiding down there, but no big ones like I'd hoped. And some of that black, uh, some of that bedrock is the swak we were talking about yesterday in class, either sandstones or shales. That's the bedrock of your that, tunnels. That here. is the bedrock. The whole, the bedrock of this whole drainage is either basalt or one of the sediments, uh -huh. the black shale, the sandstone, yeah. some piece of or layer of the 15,000 foot thick swak sedimentary series. Um, while we're on that, over by the panning tub, Scott and I went up the other day and got a whole shitload of palm leaf fossils from the Swak Sedimenter series that everybody can take one home. They're just sitting right over there. Um, the big one stays here, that one's mine, but any of the rest, <laughs> it's, it's gorgeous. It's a nice big one and still only part of a palm. But there's a whole pile of them over there. Take one home really? with you. <laughs> um, I was hoping to, if you guys have questions, maybe tie in, not make this just a mining thing, but tie in part of what you're learning in class with why the gold's here. There's a common phrase amongst miners, gold is where you find it. And I strongly disagree with that. I think that's a lame excuse for not figuring out why it's where it is. And all this stuff, the colliding continents and the, and the plates diving and breaking off and plunging, all this is tied with the formation of the gold as well as everything you guys are studying. Well, thank you for your time as well as Rob's, my God, to give up. I mean, you guys would normally be at it here. Yeah, we're, we're at it every day um, I, I don't want to rush everybody through no I, um, I want everybody to be able to go in and kind of absorb there's a, a there's a when you, as soon as you walk in there you will think to yourself my god somebody put a lot of work in here that's me <laughs> right this is the somebody when you go in there that dug all these with the exception of the real old ones there's some tunnels back in here that are well over 100 years old. We found these little stubs of candles. They were dug by candlelight. Um, I've expanded on a lot of those. Some of them I'm leaving for posterity or whatever. Um, unless I find good gold back there. Then. <laughs> um, but it's, it's cool stuff and I want you to be able to absorb it and, and not be rushed. tunnels into one and we had to shore that wall up so we just stuck rocks in there but I built this wall beautiful job and it's because if you see the dirt line you see how it rolls mm -hmm. down I only had three feet two to three feet of uh, support under that pillar uh-huh so I had to build it because if I didn't this thing would have came down and then we would have been in trouble 
and we can't have an opening that big. One of those new tunnels right here. That's the new tunnel right there that goes outside. And you do that all with like the bobcat and stuff? Mm -hmm. We used no. to use a bobcat, but we yeah. use a mini excavator now. Oh. And I'll show you when we get up here. Um, we went out last year and you see the little squirrel cage fan on the wheels right there? Okay. There was a, there's a trench right there that runs northwest south east, okay. which is kind of odd, which is the opposite direction of Nick's map yesterday, where everything was running southwest northeast. Ours is running this way. Our trenches are in here, most of them. So it's kind of off to see that. But here's okay. So right behind Nick on that big gold colored rock that we painted on the wall, we've got our first piece of gold in this tunnel. Okay. There. This was the piece of gold that was in that hole. Oh, oh no, that was just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the beginning. Remember, Rob was telling you that he hoped that we would be able to find a crack, that we could actually see the gold laying in the crack, wedged in there, so that we could pull it out with you guys here, and we were able to do that. Well, when we opened this tunnel up, we did find that one spot that he was talking about. And what we wanted to do was we were hoping that we would have this available for you guys to see, but it just didn't happen. See how the gold's wedged down in the crack? Yeah. Nick, you get a picture of that? Thank you. Oh, sure. Okay. So that tool is seven inches long. That's right where you're standing. Huh. <laughs> oh no, we cleaned it. <laughs> before we finished, before we got this all muddied up and dirty again, you could have ate off that. <laughs> <laughs> so Rob's in here and I'm in here, and it was like till like eight o'clock at night. And if you turn around, there's uh, see the electric hammer right there. Mm -hmm. Rob's operating that hammer, popping the bedrock crack open. And as he's hammering on it, the gold's jumping out of the crack. Oh, seriously? 64 pickers came out of that crack. Wow. <laughs> 24 grams of gold. When was this? Uh, January. Oh, okay. Yeah, this last January. Yeah. But this gold, this, this area produced quite a bit of gold. I mean, we pulled five ounces from where you're at to that rock. Uh -huh. We pulled almost five ounces right here. And it was in shale. It was underneath that piece of sandstone. Okay, and look right there. Is that your Yeah. <laughs> Seems how you're the last group. I'm gonna go ahead and pull oh, Okay. Oh, Bryce. <laughs> oh, Bryce. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. there it is. <laughs> that is an actual, that's, this gold has never been seen by human eyes until today. Which is not a bad little piece. There's another one that was in there underneath there, but it's laying underneath that water and I gotta pull the water out to get to it again. But I think that there's going to be more. When I ran the metal detector over here this morning before you guys got up here, I've got several hits up here. I've got two here and one down there. So I know there's more gold in here. But we'll go through and we'll scrape all this all off just to make sure. Yep, there's a piece right there. What? <laughs> right there. I got the fever. There. See it? Good old Charlie. See it? Oh, wow. Yeah. A little tiny piece right there. So there was two pieces of gold just on that piece of bedrock. And there's more in there. That's good.
and whatever the youngest age, of course, as per next class, whatever the youngest zircons there are in this bottom of this river channel is the oldest that this river could possibly be. But nobody knows how old this river is. There's a, there's a lot of things about not just the gold, um, but the geology of the whole Liberty area, the whole part of this state really, Mount Stewart and everything. You know, they used to have what they called, referred to the Great Copper Belt. You know, they don't give names like that out for without reason. And then right next to it was the Great Iron Belt. You know, there were 400 pound masses of native copper found right over the hill 100 years ago. Uh, Scott and I spent a couple of weeks working on a, a jaw crusher. A lot of this round rock that goes through the wash plat, I spread out on the driveway. Some of it's just too big and it ends up getting pushed over for fill. So I decided to put it to use, Yeah. you know, crush some of this rock and line the floors to make them, you know, get the ruts or whatever, put them on the driveways, whatever. So up on the hill, there's a whole pile of crushed rock, went through the jaw crusher with all brand new clean. You don't have to try to get a clean break with your rock hammer. There's a whole pile of it. And everything in that pile came from, again, the bottom two feet of this river channel. Um, I think a lot of it's gabbro. I don't know if there's any of this, this, I still don't understand the Atticites yet. I don't have a grip on it yet. Join the club. Yeah. Um, all different phases of the basalt. I'm assuming we got Yak or, uh, Columbia as well as Tianaway. Okay. There is no, with maybe the occasional real oddball piece of quartzite. You know, everything here came from this drainage, I think. How do you know the science part of this? You're self-taught, is that the way to say it? Or? I am self-taught. Which is yeah. really cool. That takes some dedication. It does take dedication. And when I, I, I've got, I got a large library of stuff, not just on gold, but general geology stuff. It's all tied together. Um, and my mind is one that I, I can't just accept that something is. I have to know why. So when I started on, on trying to learn all this stuff and going through some papers and, and books and trying to read geological terms, I had to have a dictionary of geologic terms so that I could understand what the sentence was. And it was amazing how many words, if you don't know them, you got to look it up or you're not getting the just of that sentence. Yeah. Tedious. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, for the most part, um, I'm self-taught in, in all my geology stuff. Um, I've had a few mentors over the years on my mining get me started. But I'm the guy that figured out how to dig these tunnels. You know, I've got my own little system. Uh, trial and error. I started off when I was my first underground was with handheld air hammers knocking this stuff loose you know i broke the same little toe twice in one day <laughs> um i figured there had to be a better way so i finally mounted a hydraulic hammer to the front of the skid steer and went at it that way now i've got a little mini excavator underground with the hydraulic hammer on it where i can just sit you know only thing missing now is a drink holder you know it's it's not that it's easy by any stretch um, but this is all stuff I had to figure out. Yeah. Um, anybody look at that microscope yet? Ariel, why don't you be the first volunteer? Look at that microscope and tell me what you think. Oh, Alexis does. Alexis, what's your project with Chris? Is it related to microscopy? Hi, Poppy. Instead of using heavy metals, we are trying to perfect it because he's doing a project that is using a machine that somebody made in their home and we're trying to perfect it because his last project was doing graduated. He wants to finish. Okay. So we're just taking over the project. Yeah. Oh, so you're separating out zircons. So it looks like there's a piece of grass up here. You doing that too, early on? Like the same oh, I didn't know leaf. that. Both you guys. Do you know if you find anything other than the palm fronds here? 
Yes, there's lots of other plant fossils. A very interesting point, though, there, there's billions of palms and, and other plant life. So this is roughly 55 million year old Swak sedimentary series. The, obviously the plant layer. But in that 15,000 feet of sediments, why aren't there any animal or insects? Yeah, that's a good question. Could be related to I don't know. maybe bacteria that would break these cobbles. It's like looking at a little treasure chest of jewels. Yeah. Uh, raw ruby uh, for my collection and it looks the same kind of texture look to those in in these jars of zircons like i said there's there's i've taken out anything that has iron in it but there's still a few colored stones in there there's only a few possibilities of what they could be I'm going to take mineralogy and rocks and minerals, and I'm hoping to learn a lot more about identifying more than just the mainstream stuff that we learned in 101, uh -huh. and I'm really excited. In there, I don't know if you notice, there's some pyrope garnets. The real, real, just as red as red can get. Yeah. Those, are the, those, those are the pyropes. They only come from 100 miles down. On this side, and it has okay, they're they're in the mantle. Yeah. That's where they're formed. So some questions: How did they get here? And then, and then another one of the reasons I study this stuff. I was joking. I didn't think there were going to be gifts. Um, I want to know the, the story of each of those minerals. This is the best day of my entire life. <laughs> and how the pyropes, chrome diopside, ilmenite, and chromite. The real bright, did, did you notice the this orange the garnets one, in there? Right? I think so. I don't, no, they're I they're gorgeous. Uh, clear, just the, orange. Just, just, those are also yeah. down there. I think he's got garnets out so, here. So, the when diamond miners right, look the, like sand. No. from the mantle, the upper mantle, that's where they come from, down where the diamonds live. In a kimberlite pipe, Three, what do you see? In you there? look more for the diamond indicators because the diamonds are so scarce. So you look for the indicator minerals that will tell you if these are present, then diamonds are probably also present. Are they garnets? And those indicators are the pyrope garnets, those orange ones, the chrome dioxide, the ilmenite, and they're all in there. Right? It's, there you go. Why not? Why not? Why not have a peek, just to see? People around Liberty, our gold is so sought after. The crystalline wire gold is in museums and private collections all over the world. It's very, very special gold. Yeah, there's pictures over there, as well as these giant 20-ounce nuggets. You know, so people have historically had the blinders on because Liberty gold is so cool. They've had the blinders on just for gold. My point is, what are the possibilities that maybe there's something else? Just find this one thing. I'm like, but there's so much other cool stuff too. So the indicators are in there. The only one missing is the purple garnet, and that's a real telltale diamond indicator. I'm not saying there's diamonds here. I'm just saying, why not have a look? If all the other indicators are here, why not have a look? <laughs> Funny you should mention Harzbergite. Yeah. I'm very interested in that myself. Mm -hmm. the, the Ingalls Ophiolite yeah. is the same as the Josephine, I think. It I is. They're, they're same lithology, but are they the same age? Yeah. I happen to be off that exotic series I was doing last yeah. fall, and that was a thing that I hit pretty hard. Yeah. So as I understand this ophiolite here and the and the Josephine, it's a piece of the ocean slab, the upper mantle that's been obducted, right? So if they're the same, we have, you know, I I hate to go with the diamond thing because people just think I'm nuts, right? When I, <laughs> but we have historically recorded diamonds gem quality in the Josephine in Northern California. If they're the same and we have all the indicators when you look at them in the microscope. Huh. 
Like I said, the only one I'm missing is the purple garnet. So why not look? Yeah. Well, this would be something to talk to Tim about because he's doing his whole masters on the Liberty Gold. Uh huh. Yeah. Have you he's met? He's in the mine right now. One oh, okay. Of our, yeah. One of our classmates. Rejected. He's the one that has a claim up here somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Family. Yeah. Really. And, and working so, with Angela. Yeah. So, this pile is is. Uh, a couple over here. These are these are ninety percent basalt. This guy, um, that guy there. Yeah, six inches long and like two inches wide. Yeah. It was like an inch thick. Yeah, yeah. So I cut a thin section of that. Yeah, that was gabbro. I can show you that sometime. So Good. Cool. Good. So I'll. But it's, I didn't, I didn't it's fun really, to be right once yeah. in a while. Well, I, don't know, I don't know where you got it from. Like exact, like I don't, do you remember where that piece came Was it from the outcrop? That, you that piece from? that I gave you was one of these boulders that I broke. Okay. Right. So it came from this river channel. It came so from the river channel. It's not from the outcrop, but we can go up to the outcrop. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that'd be good. You have an outcrop of Gabbro? I believe so, yeah. Uh, Ray Stout's the guy that pointed it out to me. I didn't realize it until he pointed it out. So again, all these rocks have been through the wash plant. Uh, I got this jaw crusher quite 15 years ago. It's been sitting in my, in my yard. I knew I'd use it someday. Um, on there, there's a tag that says, do not weld on this machine. Right? So, <laughs> I mean, a factory tag. So I called up Pioneer yeah. um, and asked them why. And they said, uh, th there's Babbitt bearings in there. It's okay to weld on the machine, but just set up your lead so you're not pushing the, the juice through the bear Babbitt mm -hmm. bearings. Mm -hmm. She just said, well, what, uh, which one do you have? I said, it's a nine by 18. And she said, well, Pioneer never made a nine by 18. <laughs> so I sent her a picture. <laughs> Right, and she says, "I talk, called her back, and she says, by God, you're right. That was built in 1941.' So we got a 1941 9x18 Pioneer jaw crusher run by a 1940-ish green diamond flathead six. Beautiful. <laughs> that works like a champ. So now over here, Andrew, we got all of our freshly broke rock we can look at. <laughs> What's the oldest piece of machinery you got around here, Rob? Oldest? Yeah. Um, probably that jaw crasher. Right How about what's your favorite piece of machinery? Um, the 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 brand new mini excavator that I bought that fits in those tunnels okay. is a is is a love hate thing. I love what it can do for me, but it beats the hell out of me. Mm. So it, it, there is no give in that machine, but it does tremendous work. Because it just don't have that suspension or anything like that? There's no suspension on an excavator, and, and, that, yeah. and the bedrock is uneven, and you're never sitting level, and it's jerking around. Mm -hmm. uh, it does tremendous amount of work for me. That's good. Uh, some of my other favorites, though, are, are the old pieces. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love that that jaw crusher is, is back doing what it was built to do. You know, yeah. and and it crunches. It just chews his stuff up. It's just a thing of beauty. How does that work? Is it just got some big like metal teeth inside of it that's like pulled together? Or is it like it's a different thought. <laughs> I mean, to me, this is a, a pretty standard look of a of a Tianoe basalt compared to a again just super crude and and back of the envelope kind of a thing, but. Have you looked at enough Tianwe basalt? To no, I have not. I have not. I, in fact, I, I would have said that's Tianwe. You would have. Well, um, and then of course you, you throw in there in the in some of the old literature they talk about they refer to it as a diabase dike. Yeah. And my understanding is it's basalt, mm -hmm. but it's cooled a little bit slower where you can see the individual crystals. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah, slower, bigger. Slower, slower cooling, bigger crystals. 
I mean, it's funny you mentioned the Diabase Dyke. Yeah, I think it was. So we're coming out with a map this year, and we have a new like gravity and aero map here. Actually, between COVID and everything, like yeah. everything got shuffled around. Like, yeah. I'm really glad this is uh, I'm, finally happening. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. This good stuff. So how come you're crushing here? I missed that part. These are the, these are the, the cobbles you're pulling out of the mine. You you, you want to deal with it somehow. What, what's the um, well, you, up till now, it's just been pushed over the side of the hill for fill. For fill. For fill. So, I got this crusher. Um, yeah. This this will take a lot of the mud out of here in the all winter. Oh, oh. Um, I'm going to line all the tunnels got after it. I'm done. Got it. Uh, get rid of all the ruts in the tunnels. That's this this will pack in real yeah. good tight. Yeah, this yeah. will be perfect for that. Yeah. <laughs> helpful material to have for yeah. logistics and operations. Yeah, why, why throw it away if you can use it? Got some nice things sitting in the pile. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's some cool stuff in there. Is that a quartzite? Oh, the acid. Is it all right if it's I put a, some hydrochloric acid on it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's just not very many rocks <laughs> like just that here. Just a bottle of HCO. He's a pro. Got to pass the pass the test. Pass that as the test, yeah. Make sure it's not like Next, that. Andrew's going to take his mask off and bite into it. See, yeah. if, <laughs> see if he can get through it. He can't. It's a quartzite. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and there are some like opaque like black material. Maybe that's some of the magnetite that you're talking about. They're really small, like medium grains of fine grain. Oh, come on, where's the nearest quartzite outcrop? You and I have discussed before. We we have Swat Creek. Yeah. And we have Williams Creek. Okay. And then Williams Creek branches off to Williams Creek and Boulder Creek. And Boulder Creek is called Boulder Creek for a reason. It's got giant, <laughs> well-worn, water-worn boulders in it. But the length of it is only a couple miles. So I think there was a there was part of this river came was before Columbia Basalts, and probably and a lot of this probably traveled quite some distance. So then it's not an Ice Age river. You keep talking about an Ice Age river. No, that. The, the 22 feet to bedrock, that's the Ice Age River. That's the new channel. This has been here for millions of years. The sandstones that are all in this area are like super camp. You know? This is the old channel. The new channel was carved in the Ice Age, I think. But your, your tunnels are in the old stuff. In the old stuff. I thought you were tunneling into the Ice Age River gravels. Nope. Jesus. I totally missed that. Upper terrace, older stuff, and you're saying down there is the younger ice age, like barren gravel. No, not not barren at all. It was rich ground. A bucket line dredge came right through where we were sitting on the, around the fire. Came right through here, at that lower level. Do you think it's recy like recycling the stuff that's older? In all of the gold that was was in the new channel came from the old channel. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. So people ask me where to go panning all the time. Uh, and I tell them, look for the benches. Yeah. If you have... You want this on camera? That's fine. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's <laughs> they never listen anyway. <laughs> I tell them, get out, get out of the current yes. modern day rivers. Yes. Find a bench. Because if you think about it, if... If this lower channel was carved during the Ice Age, mm -hmm. that's within the last million, probably, or younger. Or younger. Yeah. This river had many, many millions of years of accumulating gold yeah. versus one. And everything down there came from here. It's, it's like it'd be harder to get more material down there than it would be just to kind of come from the if you were here, if you were the first group here, you did really well yeah. in the new channel. But there's been 150 years of people uh, smarter than us mining down there and walking right by these right. benches. If I dig a tunnel, if I go inside here and hang a left, I'm in virgin ground. Nobody's been there. Yeah. Down here, 150 years worth of people have been looking.
you cut open any one of these and it's wire gold inside. So the gold came from the pockets of wire in the, in the block shales, uh, as well as the traditional hard rock uh, quartz, uh, they call it bird's eye quartz, but it's quartz breccia. So little small pieces disseminated through a traditional hard rock vein. Because that's kind of a thing, is like just to see which way the, the back is almost to our magic way. time window. <laughs> Hayden, you <laughs> always <laughs> have to upstage everybody. <laughs> um, here, no. Uh, I don't know about that. It's no, pretty it's much all dipping quartz. south. There is no the, the main anticline. Well, yeah. Uh, where does this come from? Of, and one yeah, branches yeah. off. No. Where? <laughs> the main one. We're. I picked it up. And unfortunately, ground. we're on. There's the downstream nice side of the, where, the, where the layers are tipped up here, this way, instead of that way. Down here, first, where we are, that first group still in a there? piece of gold can get down in a crevice here, but the water and the rocks break that lip and releases that gold, so it doesn't build up. If, if, this, if the gold that came over across here, if I, could, if I was on this side of the anticline, all these little ripples would have piled up. This would have been vastly richer ground than it is. Okay, I catch you. Are, are, are there any uh, any detailed fault maps? That's the thing, not here. And, and to me, that's like, that's the that's a problem. Like I think there should be we, this should be looked at in more detail because I think that's going to help with the whole story. Yeah, huh? Works like a charm, I hear. Huh? Yeah, right. Well, you see the pile. Uh, Would this be like serpent? So, so there is your pile. I don't think so. No, okay, it's uh, just like green enough, not waxy enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That was What'd awesome. you think? That was awesome. <laughs> Where's your tip jar, Scott? <laughs> what the I, hell? Cool the, the riverbed in there. Uh huh. That, that, especially that place you cleaned out. That it was in a meter. He gave us a special treat of like being able to see a little. Piece get overturned in there. You did but, see a piece come yeah, out. Yeah, it was about a quarter was, gram. Right on. <laughs> you know, you're the first human to see I that. Know, that's that was that was fantastic. Yeah. Well, so. and this is Tim, the guy who's going to be studying with Angela Halfpenny. Okay, you got the, you got the claim out. I'm, here. I'm, yep, right so on. I'm good. Be doing good. The gold stuff. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to learn about America. all this stuff. So. Just so, west. Yeah. West. No, west. sorry. Um, Bertha, Bertha's claim. We're on because Bertha's up on top of. Right. Right. We're just to the. Yeah. Sorry. Just to the west. Yep. You're correct. Yeah. So right at the head of Harkness. Uh, no. It, yeah. Yeah. It's um lane night tool. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one that we're trying to set up. Oh, we're neighbors. Awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Good. <laughs> yeah. There's some interesting yeah. things up there. Out of the rock for the first time. Got Unbelievable. A, yeah. got a nice little one, probably quarter grammar. No kidding. Well, so yeah. And I left it sitting in the mud on the, on the bedrock. <laughs> Actually, there was two. So your your family's the ones who bought Lane's and house? Still sitting in no, there we, we've, uh, we've, uh, our, my so dad we'll is Jim Miller. Um, okay, he, okay. Uh, we okay, own good. a property right. up behind. Well, they might be ready if you are. Is there another group getting organized? I guess they are, yeah. Okay. I'm willing to listen to every piece of advice I can on it. If you use an XRF? Have you used one? No. If you used one on a piece of wire gold out of uh, Harkness, yeah, okay. it's going to tell you there's 20% silver, give or take. Right. You take one of these nuggets that I get out of here, mm -hmm. your XRF is going to tell you it's 95, 97, but it's not. Okay. Interesting. The silver yeah. that's naturally alloyed with all the golden livery, XRF doesn't penetrate in. Okay. It's just a very, very, you got to figure that those guys were in there with candlelight. They didn't have any metal detectors. Uh, as soon as you disturb the water, it's muddy, you know, they don't have any shop backs, you know, so um, they were outstanding miners, but they left a certain percentage. So it was worthwhile over here to clean out those old tunnels and metal detect them, um, vacuum them out and get what they left. Over there, they left between 20 and 25%. Here they left maybe two percent. Wow! Maybe. Was here was on top of they the were area. on Good. top of it. Yeah. Okay. With no tunnels on it, probably sixty feet by. If you go inside, also maybe eighty. Okay. That's a big patch to leave undisturbed. I because I got the machines, I could I could peel the whole top off and see you know and get what they left. They didn't leave a fucking thing. <laughs> they knew where 
where the gold was going to be and where they left a big patch undisturbed because they knew there was no gold there. How? Good question. Really? Yeah. Good question. They read the bedrock. They read the rock and the river. They understood the flow and the and the pay streaks and how they flow through there. They could read that rock, what I can't. Damn. That's someone spending their whole damn life just thinking about that, just mapping that out in their head. That's crazy. Um, no, or, or, um, not necessarily. No. You've got to remember, there's only a few of us left. Yeah. When they were here, there was all kinds of them. Yeah. Right? There was a pool. There was a pool of knowledge. Yeah. People who had done it their whole life before them. So, and they had lots of resources. I got to learn this stuff myself. There's nobody left. Right. And it was just, it, when he was, um, when he broke into it, it just didn't break how I was mentally thinking okay, that sure. it would break. And then when he flipped it over, it was it was still almost in its clay-like, but still hard. And I just thought that that was I don't know. It just fascinated me a little bit that you're fine. <laughs> did he did he set it up like did he like like before you went to that one spot? He said, "Well, you know, we might have something down here. Let's let's go." Well, yeah. Or did so, it take you a while to figure out what he was doing? No. So what he he said that you guys had um, pre-dug in that area there and were like had scraped it out and. He said that they they scrape and then do the metal detector, scrape and more metal detector, and they had detected it, and you guys left it there so that we could see what it's like to actually right, ac try to, to actually we find it. After vacuumed it as well. Yeah, because yeah. he had to vacuum it out but even more. Once, once you go over everything with the shop back, then you can see all them little tiny cracks. Yeah. And those little tiny cracks, an eighth of an inch, we had oh, one we pulled 63 pieces out. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was like. Where you guys are standing, we pulled like over 63 pieces yeah. out in this section alone and, and he showed us like a picture of it yeah. how you just it just kind of he says it's almost like it plays peekaboo it, yeah. <laughs> crack that big, it will get down in there yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy it is crazy yeah, yeah. Years, years, maybe. yeah. Until, until you saw it. <laughs> sounds cool okay thank you <laughs> nice job that's two or three weeks well you're going to give it all up and start mining here uh, for the rest of your life, Bill? I actually want to go into mining because so that was like the coolest damn thing ever. Honestly, when I was in there, I was like in a candy store. I want to touch everything, but <laughs> of course I didn't. But, you know, I just like it's it's what I want to do. I want to go into economic geology. So like I'm applying for jobs down in Nevada right now. Oh, you are? And certain places I've applied to are gold mining okay. and gold exploration. So definitely things I'd like to do. Thank you.